Whatever you love, you are going to spend a lot of time doing that thing. So if you really love TV, you're gonna spend a lot of time watching TV. If you really love hanging out with your friends, you're gonna spend a lot of time hanging out with friends. If you really love God, you are going to not only do what God says, but you're gonna spend a lot of time in God's word, reading God's word, and praying to God. And the verse that we're going to talk about today comes from the book of Psalms, verse 46. So it's Psalm 18, verse 46. David, who's the author, is going to tell us a little bit about where our heart may be. And we want to know that our heart is, is the center of our being. So when I talk about the heart, I'm talking about the, what, you, what drives you. So like what you want to do. So Psalm 18, 46 says this, The Lord lives. And blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of my salvation. So what does that verse mean? Well, the first part, it says the Lord lives. There's a song that David quotes quite a bit. It says, you know, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. And so we know that God is not someone who is dead. But when Jesus Christ came as a, as a baby and he died on the grave, he didn't stay in the grave. Three days later, he rose from the grave. And it says, and blessed be my rock. And so when you think of God as a rock, you think of like, if you're like a house and you've been built as a house, the foundation of your house, it really matters. So it's not just, just the grass, but the rock that your house is on matters. Because if, if, if that rock moves or breaks, it, the house is going to fall down. But when you trust in Christ, who is the rock, you're never going to be led astray. Right here, I have some pennies, if you can hear them here. And some people worship money. They worship things just like this, like pennies. But we know about the, these pennies is that these pennies aren't alive. This penny is not worthy of your worship because it, it will never comfort you at hard times. It's never going to bring you joy. Even if th these few pennies were millions of dollars, all of that money will never make you truly joyful inside. The only thing that can make you joyful is Jesus Christ. And to say that worshiping pennies is worthy of, of, your, of your time and your devotion, it just doesn't, it's not worth it. It's never worth it. The reason the second half of the verse that David says, and exalted be the God of my salvation, is because God know because we know and David knew that the only way to have salvation is to trust in God. In David's time, that, that word salvation meant after he died, he knew that he was going to stand before God. And he trusted in God for his salvation as he was a man after God's own heart. Now that we live after the New Testament has been written, we know that salvation, that word, means that you can completely trust in the person of Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The book of Romans says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart, God raised from the dead, you will be saved. So you need to just repent of your sins, turn away from the things that you know you're doing wrong, and believe in the person of Christ, and he will give you a new heart. A heart like David's that wants to love the Lord and doesn't want to worship money, or doesn't want to worship movies. It wants to worship the Messiah, the only one who can give us final and eternal salvation and comfort and joy. And so while the world is going to tell you that you should worship a TV or maybe you should worship a celebrity or worship one of the new Marvel characters, the only person you should worship is God. And we know that the Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be the God of my salvation and of your salvation as well. Whether you accept Jesus Christ or not, he is the only Savior of the world that we have. And we know that he is worthy of our worship. And he is worthy of all of the praise. Let me pray for you. Lord, the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. And I thank you for this day. I thank you for all the things you do for us, for how you provide for us, how you are our rock, our solid foundation, the one upon whom which we stand. And I pray that you would be blessing, keeping, and guiding those who are listening to be more mature and Christ-honoring followers of you. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen.
Have a great day.